I've been doing Pokemon challenge runs for years. I've beat the games with first stage Pokemon, awful Pokemon, completed solo runs, attempted dozens of Nuzlocks, etc, etc. I'm pretty good at the whole challenge thing. But the most interesting challenge I've ever tried is beating a Pokemon game without attacking. Back in 2020, I managed to beat Pokemon Leaf Green without attacking once. I uploaded the final battle and a ton of people watched it. In January, I did the same challenge in Pokemon Sapphire, which less people watched. For my third non-attacking video, I decided I should probably put in some effort to make a full video for the run instead of just writing a wall of text. So, what game to do? Well, Leaf Green was easy because you can get Bulbasaur as a starter, and it's one of the best Pokemon for this kind of run. Sapphire was much harder with an impossible early game and a lack of a solid starter, so I should probably pick a harder game to push myself. Uh, Platinum is decently difficult. Wait! Hold on! Better idea. Renegade Platinum. What is Renegade Platinum? Renegade Platinum is a ROM hack by Drayano that takes normal Platinum and makes it very, 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 very hard. It also adds in a ton of extra content and quality of life improvements, but the main thing is the nightmarish difficulty. So, a uh, perfect game to beat without using one of the main gameplay mechanics, I guess. Now you may be wondering, how can you beat a Pokemon game without attacking? Simple. Just... Don't use any physical or special moves. There are multiple ways to deal damage through statuses, weather, entry hazards, or abilities. In fact, by my count, there are more than 20 different ways to deal damage without me using an attacking move. Of these, the one that I found works the best is Toxic Poison, which kills in 5 turns with little downsides. Leech Seed and Burn, which kill in 8, are also good to take out Steel and Poison types. Parish Song, Confusion, Curse, and Entry Hazards all also have their uses. Ideally, we want to get a team of 6 bulky Pokémon that carry a good mix of these damaging methods. Of course, it isn't that easy. To get to a point where we can utilize these strategies, we first need to get through the hardest part of any no-attack run. The first couple routes! Starting off the run, I named myself <laughs> as is tradition, and named my rival Rascal because I was reading Crime and Punishment at the time. I chose Turtwig for my starter because it has the best bulk, and lost the first battle of the run because I can't attack. The battle actually took 19 turns, because I was forced to use Withdraw over and over again, making my rival do 1 HP per hit. <laughs> now, you'll notice that this isn't actual footage of my run. That's because I didn't film it. It took 80 hours and I have a small hard drive. I did film the final battle though, so look forward to that in, I don't know, 20-30 minutes? Anyway, I named my Turtwig Jonathan Joestar because he's a nice big boy who will be leaving our party early on. I also grabbed a Chimchar and Piplup from Rowan's lab, naming them Meat and Shield respectively. When I returned to Twinleaf Town, Joanna gave me an Eevee that I named Rhodes, and to fill out the team, I grabbed two Bidoof. While heading back to fight Lucas, by the way, you fight Lucas a few times in this version, I ran into a wild Nidoran. Realizing that Nidoran's poison point ability can poison opponents and, you know, deal damage, I caught it, named it Trunks, and boxed the Chimchar. So, we may have lost our first fight, but I have a feeling the second will go better. Never mind, Lucas's Piplup swept my entire team with Bubble. During the rematch, I threw my team of pacifist children at Lucas's Devil Bird until it ran out of PP and struggled to death. The next two trainers used physical moves and poisoned themselves on Nidoran, but the last trainer on Route 202 was a monster by the name of Youngster Logan. That six-year-old Hellspawn gave me more trouble than the entire Elite Four. The little bastard has a level 7 Growlithe that doesn't know any physical moves, which means Poison Point is useless. I had to tank 25 embers before it struggled, hoping that it didn't burn me. Worse, his Growlithe knows how, which makes it so the struggle is deadly. And when it finally goes down, Lucas has a Zigzagoon and a Burmy who has Shed Skin. Ugh. It took me four attempts of abusing Growl Spam, Water Sport, switching my team around to manipulate what moves he used, and finally remembering the Chimchar resists fire to finally beat this little brat. Heading into Jubilife, I was given an opportunity to get a free Bulbasaur. Now, uh, Bulbasaur would have made this run much easier, but I already used one in my Leaf Green run, so I skipped it. Looking back, this was a mistake. 
Instead, I caught a Badoo I named Diaz. It started out with only water sporting growth, but it did have poison point, which is nice, I guess. Dreano added an NPC in the trainer school who gives you a random egg. I hatched it and got a Mime Junior. Knowing that mimes are evil, I reset immediately and got a Hapini. Hapini evolves into one of the best tanks in the entire game, but it doesn't get any good moves for a while, so I reset again. I also skipped two Magby and an Elekid before the RNG finally gave me what I was looking for, a Smoochum I named Free Coke. Now, Smoochum and its evolved form Jinx aren't bulky, but they have movesets full of interesting moves. For instance, Smoochum came with the move Sweet Kiss, which causes confusion and gave us our first reliable form of damage. After losing a rematch to that Russian Nihilist prick, I grinded Voodoo up until it evolved. Along the way, it learned a few new tricks. Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, and most importantly, Leech Seed. Leech Seed carried me through the early game. Even in the late game, a move that takes away 1 8th per turn while providing free healing is pretty good. I won my rematch against my rival and immediately ran into another annoyance. A trainer with an Abra. This ROM hack made it so all members of the Abra family always have the ability Magic Guard, which makes them immune to passive damage. This one I was able to struggle out, but it was a preview of something that would come up a few times during this run. Along the way to Rourke, I found TMs for Endure and Flash, which I taught to everyone because this ROM hack makes TMs reusable. In Orberg Gate, I ran into a trainer with CDOT. Grass types are immune to Leech Seed, CDOT only had non-contact moves, which cancels out Poison Point, and its Nature Power Rock Slide was enough to one-shot smooch him, so I was stuck at another roadblock. Rather than struggle it out, I went back to Route 204 to catch an Oddish. I... Couldn't find one, so I got a bell sprout instead. Named it just okay, trained it until it learned poison powder, killed the sea dot, and finally reached Orberg City. Before taking on Rourke, I grabbed a moonstone from Orberg Gate and evolved trunks. My first attempt to take on Rourke went poorly. His nose passed paralyzed Rosalia, and his Geodude swept my entire team with fire punch. After four losses to Rourke, I decided I needed some new tricks to beat him and began grinding up Rosalia. And because Rourke's nose pass gave more EXP than the wild Pokemon, I grinded on Rourke. After my 18th loss, Rosalia learned two fantastic new moves, Spikes and Toxic Spikes. Up until around Wake, my main strategy was to lead with Rosalia, set up two layers of T-Spikes, and tank with my Meat Shields. Rourke's Cranidos ended up being a hassle, killing every Pokemon I had except Turtwig, but a constant spam of potions delayed battle tendency for a few more hours and earned me the coal badge. Finally, after 16 hours, I beat the first gym leader. This, uh, run, it, uh, took a while. The next couple routes were a cakewalk. I lost a few battles, but run into no major roadblocks. Mars's Golbat destroyed my team with extra sensory and wing attack, but I took it out easily on the rematch. Her Perugly, which knows facade, was terrifying, but spamming endure and healing items saved me. Eterna Forest was a break from my normal strategy because Cheryl, who can use attacking moves, took out enemy Pokemon for me. I ended up spending some extra time in the forest grinding up my team. In the process, Turtwig and Smoochum both evolved. Before taking on Gardini, I picked up a few new team members. From the old chateau, I grabbed a Rotom, who I named BLT and grinded up until it learned Will-O-Wisp, which paired nicely with Substitute, Double Team, and Flash to make BLT nearly unkillable. From Mount Cornet, I grabbed a Bronzor I named Beauty. Then I realized it had Heatproof and replaced it with another Bronzor who I named Beast. Beast also had Heatproof. The third Bronzor, Gaston, fortunately had Levitate, earning it a place on the team as a tank. Eterna City also had an herb shop which sold me some tank kush that made my Pokemon hate me. I burned Gardenia's Bell Awesome, set up five spike layers, and stalled with Bronzor. Her Cherim's Weather Ball managed to take out most of my team because apparently Bronzor is weak to fire moves. Ultimately, I won the battle, with only a half-health Rotom still standing. In the Galactic Building, I ran into a scientist with a Kadabra who cemented my hatred for the ability Magic Guard. Then I tried to take on Jupiter, who had a Sableye, who had the ability Magic Guard, and had ghost stab moves that one-shot all my confusers. On my fifth attempt, the little demon took out half my team before I finally struggled it out! 
Also in the Galactic Building, I found a cool oven that I put BLT in to give my team a resistance to fire. I grinded the team up to level 35 in Wayward Cave, causing Gaston to evolve into Bronzong. As I entered Heart Home, I was attacked by Aaron, who apparently fights you in this version. He wiped the floor with me and ran away before I could rematch him. I got a shiny stone at the contest hall and evolved Diaz into Roserate. I lost my first battle to Fantina, but won the second one thanks to the power of double team spam. Unlike the first two battles, the third rival battle was a cakewalk. On Route 209, I caught a Chansey I named Hail Mary, who served as a special wall to Gaston's physical. Before I could continue on, Rodian Raskolnikov kidnapped me and dragged me to the Pokemon Mansion to deal with some galactic goons. So... This is the biggest roadblock in this run. To continue the story of Renegade Platinum, you need to beat a mini challenge where you have to take on three trainers in six turns exactly. They have a Ninkata, a Ninjask, and a Shedinja respectively. Now, Shedinja always goes down in one turn, so that's easy. But the problem is, I had to take out the other two Pokemon in five turns. Leech Seed and Will Wisp both take 8 turns, and Toxic Spikes doesn't work if the trainer only has one Pokemon. So yeah, bit of a roadblock. I found a Swagger TM, and my first strategy was to make them take themselves out in confusion. I could get Ninjas down in 3 turns, but Ninkata was too weak to lose quickly. My second strategy was to grind Jinx up to level 47, where it learned Parasong. The grinding was tedious, but Parasong kills in 3, so it should have worked. I went back and took on the Ninkata, only to learn a horrible truth. Paris Song kills in four. One to set up, then three more for the clock to tick down. So, game over. This run cannot be done without attacking. Unless... I poured over the documentation until I found what I needed. In Renegade Platinum, if you use the Poke Radar at Lake Verity, you can find a Why Not. Why Not learns Destiny Bond. I caught a Why Not named him Bodge, and returned to the mansion with a plan. Turn 1. Why not? Using the Quick Claw gets off a Destiny Bond, takes the Ninkata with it. Turn 2. Jinx gets off the Paris Song. Turn 5. Paris Song takes down Ninjask. And finally, on turn 6 exactly, Shedinja is killed by Will-O-Wisp. Game. Set. Match. After that victory, I decided it was time for Trunks to go back to his own time and attempted to catch my 6th plan team member. A Spirit Tomb. Spirit Tomb is a great Pokemon who learns fantastic moves like Will-O-Wisp, Curse, and Destiny Bond. Hey, speaking of Curse, the Spirit Tomb I used my odd keystone to summon killed itself by using Curse twice. And I didn't have another odd keystone. And the last time I saved was before I spent hours grinding up Jinx and tracking down a Why Not. So, I did not catch a Spirit Tomb. Instead, I caught a Duskull and named it Mate 8. I know I skipped Bulbasaur because I'd already used one in the past run, but fuck it. I need a curse user, and the RNG killed the last one. In Salacion Town, there is a trainer with six Blissey who is designed to be used for grinding. I got the entire team up to level 50. Mary and Eight both evolved, giving me my final team before even the fourth gym. Salacion also features a merchant who sells those berries that remove EVs, which I used to get rid of some useless attack and special attack EVs. My new, powerful fighting force allowed me to easily defeat Maylene. As I traveled through the middle game, I picked up teams for Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, and Protect, allowing me to start finalizing my movesets. Unfortunately, I kept running into trainers with Safeguard or Taunt, which is annoying. I also switched Rotom from an oven to a washing machine to help me take on Wake. The fourth fight with Rascal was tough. His Staraptor one-shot Rose Raid before I could get off Spikes, and his Snorlax kept healing with Rest and killing my team with Body Slam. I beat him in the rematch by using Curse on the Staraptor and Taunt on the Snorlax. Crasher Wake's Quagsire kept spamming Recover. I had Gaston use Swagger on it a few times, which was a bad idea, because it killed half my team. After this battle, I stopped using Swagger. BLT managed to take out the Quagsire, Mediate and Diaz swept the rest of Wake's team thanks to a generous use of healing items. 
After heading through the second worst part of the game, now no longer terrible because Dreano got rid of the fog, I was ambushed by Lucas. He led with an Alakazam. I forced it to switch out by using Paris Song, but it kept coming back after I took out its teammates. Eventually, Lucas ran out of Pokemon to switch to and the Alakazam finally perished. Cyrus's Weavile almost swept my entire team, but I took it out with a Destiny Bond. Before I could go to Canalave, I was forced to fight Darok at the Pal Park. It was probably a hard battle, considering how stacked his team is, but I didn't write down how it went. Honestly, my note-taking was a bit shoddy during the mid-game. I mean, seriously, all I wrote about the rival fight on the bridge is that it was easy. BLT handily took out Byron's Pokemon. Saturn led with an Alkazam, but after dealing with Lucas and Darok, I knew how to juggle it. Before I could take on Candace, I had to head into the Snowpoint Temple and calm down Regigigas, which was a problem, because I had never gone through the Snowpoint Temple before. The ice puzzles took me half an hour. Also, I didn't actually get to fight Regigigas, which was disappointing. I set up Stealth Rock and two layers of T-Spikes in my fight with Kansas, then tanked with Bronzong. Her Frost Last took out Gaston, but I managed to take it out with Curse, and finish Candace's Wall Rain off with a Parasong. The rematches with Cyrus and Saturn weren't noteworthy. The doubles rematch with Jupiter and Mars, though, that was interesting, because Raskolnikov showed up and destroyed both of their teams using his Infernape. After stumbling around the worst part of the game for a while, I reached the final battle with Cyrus. I had to leave Bronzong behind so I could take an HM slave with me to deal with the rock climb sections, but I'm sure the fight with Cyrus won't be bad with one team member gone. Oh shit, it's a double battle. Oh shit, he sent out the Olga and Palkia. Oh shit, they're both level 70. Wait, hold on. These are the only Pokemon he has. Which means, <laughs> hey, who would win? The gods of time and space, or one grape who can't sing? After Jinx, may gods perish, it was time for the real fight with Cyrus. His Crobat killed Rosalia, who I probably should have stopped using as a lead a long time ago because her defenses are terrible. Rotom took out Crobat and Honchkrow. I switched to Blissey to take on Houndoom, but it killed her the same turn it died from Toxic. Cyrus's Weavile beat Dusknorb, but BLT managed to take it out. Cyrus's Gyarados set up two Dragon Dances and unleashed Stone Edge, which would have been bad if Rotom hadn't spammed Double Team while fighting the Weavile. Finally... Cyrus' last Pokemon, his Magnezone, died like a god to Paris Song. Once the battle was done, Cyrus warned us that killing Giratina would destroy the universe. And I mean, that's bad and all, but I kind of have a taste for god slaying now. Giratina perished and the universe somehow survived. Neat. The last gym leader, Volkner, went down after I set up T-Spikes with Rosa and tanked with Mary and BLT. Before heading on to the Elite Four, I decided to go hunting. Yuxi, Azelf, Mesperit, Regice, Registeel, Mew, Entei, Suicune, Raikou, Zapdos, Articuno, and Celebi all perished at the feet of Free Coke. I also found a shiny Pelipper that I named Wingle. I had no use for it, but that's neat, I guess. It can sit in the box where I put the Pokemon I no longer love. Going through Victory Road, Marley almost took out my entire team with her fast, hard-hitting Arcanine, but it killed itself by using a recoil move against a Blissey. During the final battle with Lucas, I realized a much better way to deal with his Alakazam. Send out Dusknoir, use Destiny Bond, let it win with Shadow Ball. Easy. Before heading to the Pokemon League, I made sure to perish two more gods and grinded the entire team up to level 72. Finally, after 80-odd hours of playing the game during Zoom lectures, it was time for the final boss rush. I burned Raskolnikov's Star Raptor with Dusknoir and stalled it out with Bronzong. Dusknoir sacrificed itself to curse the Infernape, and Rotom shrugged off the monkey's death throes. Jinx poisoned Breloom and dodged a Stone Edge before I switched to Bronzong. As it went down, Breloom took Bronzong with it with the critical hit force palm. I sent out Diaz and set up Leech Seed and T-Spikes before falling to Azumarill's ice punches. BLT stalled out the Azumarill and managed to hold off the Heracross long enough for Toxic Poison to kill it. Finally, my rival Snorlax went down to a Paris song. And with that, I never have to see Raskolnikov again. Go back to Siberia, asshole. 
The sets of Elite Four members are randomized between four options, making planning for them a bit difficult. For Aaron, who ended up using his Maskeran set, I led with Bronzong and got off Stealth Rocks before switching to Blissey. After Blissey took out Maskeran, Aaron sent in his Heracross. Dusknor got a curse off before falling to a Stone Edge. Heracross also claimed Bronzong before going down. Rotom took out Drapion thanks to a Reflect Bronzong setup, but was poisoned in the process. Blissey took out the Beautifly, but Aaron replaced it with with a monstrous scissor that tore through my team. Rotom burned it, but it took out Rotom, Roserade, and Blissey before falling. Jinx called in a pair song, I used a revive, and the first of four fell. I led with Diaz in the fight with Bertha, because only one of her sets is bad for Roserade. Bertha went with the bad set, the one with the Fire Punch Tyranitar, because luck hates me. Still, Rosa managed to redeem her past failures by getting off two layers of T-Spikes and stalling out the Tyranitar. After that, I sent in Gaston, whose combination of Iron Defense, Reflect, and Levitate allowed it to defeat Mammoth Swine, Dugtrio, and Rhyperior with ease. Bertha's Quagsire, much like Wake's, was a pain in the ass, but it eventually ran out of her covers and fell to a curse. Finally, Dia's tank blows from Bertha's Torterra, taking out the second of four. Three of Flint's four possible sets lead with a special attacker, so I led with Blissey. Naturally... Flint sent out a Rapidash and killed Blissey with a Flare Blitz. Dusk Noir cursed Rapidash and switched to Rotom to stall. Blissey took out Magmortar with a Toxic, and Flint sent out his Lopany. I sent out Dusk Noir, who immediately went down to a high jump kick. Turns out Dreano gave Lopany Scrappy in this hack. That's fun! Rotom burned Lopany before getting KO'd. Gaston tanked a few hits while he revived Dusknoir, and the Lopany finally fell. Dusknoir took out Infernape, Blissey took out Driftblim, and Jinx took out Steelix. Lucian, the last of the four, forced me to use my entire team. Blissey for his Espeon, Dusknoir and Rotom for his Metacham, Blissey and Bronzong for his Girafferig, Dusknoir for his Galite, and finally Jinx for his Executor and Star. Army. The Elite Four beaten, I peeled up, topped my levels off with rare candies, and prepared for hell. How did it go? Uh, fuck if I know, I haven't recorded that bit yet. Good luck, future me! Yeah, thanks, Past Casey. Hi, this is live now. I'm actually playing the game. We're gonna fight Cynthia. I'm uh, gonna show off the team real quick. First off, we got Diaz with these moves. Pause if you want to see the moves. You'll see them again throughout the video. This team's got me through the 87-something hours this playthrough has been. Like, seriously, what is it? A lot. A lot. 88 hours. We're going in to fight Cynthia. We have Diaz leading because of Cynthia's four sets. Diaz is good against, uh, I, be I believe, all of them, yeah. Plus, if I can get off those spikes, it'll make it a lot easier. And you enter, and you get the famous piano music that everyone loves. And I'm going to skip through this text because, I mean, this video's gone on long enough. Thank you for sitting through so much. Uh, and now it begins. Champion Cynthia versus McCulkey Culkin Scream is what I name myself in every single playthrough of a Pokemon game. Because I just, I think it's fine. Okay, and she's going with her Milotic set. That's actually the bad one. That one... Has Ice Beam to start off with, but Toxic Spikes, if I can get those off, I'm good. Oh, and you fool, you fucking fool, you're going for Light Screen. I have no special moves, you donut. Like, seriously, Milotic looks like a donut in this game. Okay, and I survived that, which means Diaz. Because Diaz has good healing from uh, Leech Seed and... Black Sludge, Diaz should be able to get out this Milotic, and if I can burn one of Cynthia's full restores, that would be good. I'm going to try and avoid using healing items as much as possible. Uh, in fact, you know what, if I... Hmm. If I avoid using healing items... Wait, when does Reflect wear off? Because it might go for that instead. Oh no, no, leftover is great. That's gonna make this take forever. Okay, I should be able to survive this hit and get off that spikes. I prefer more layers, but that's probably all I'm gonna be able to get in, because... Yep, I miscalculated. I'm dead now. That's fine. I get... Diaz did her purpose. She sets up spikes. 
So now I'm gonna go to Mary. My wonderful special tank, Hail Mary. Oh, you don't need that, you foolish, foolish donut. With those little heart antenna things. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I... These battles take a while, so you just gotta roll with it. Let's see, it's female, so there's no point in using a track. So I'll just get some double teams, some protects, install it out. Thankfully, I restored my power points, which, yeah, that's what PP stands for. I restored all that in advance. You see, I'm a lot less intelligent sounding when I'm uh, having to improv things on the spot. And I had animations turned off throughout this whole run. I turned them back on for this battle, and it's taking longer now. Hmm. Let's see. After this, she's going to have a Spiritomb, Ampharos, Staraptor, Lucario, and Garchomp. Uh, all of them hit hard, but they don't have anything that will really mess my team up, I don't think. Okay. Oh, and a burn. That's not great. But I can take... I can tank it. I'm actually pretty sure I have the game going at, like, 1.5 speed. I thought I turned that off, but now listening to the music, I... Yeah, that is happening. And, of course, you use the full restore. I'm pretty sure she has four of those. That's going to be fun. But, I mean, there's still the leech seed. And I'm going to get another toxic on. It'll only be a few more turns, and then my Lodic will be down. Yeah, that music is sped up. <laughs> I actually only have, like, half an hour to do this battle. I hope it doesn't take half an hour. But it very... Ri it... It's... Yeah, it realistically could, because it keeps healing, and battles in this run take long. That's why, even with that 1.5 speed, I don't know if that affects the actual in-game, like, timer, or if it's based off your system clock, but... Yeah, it's taken a while. It's been a very long run. Uh, and the next run I have... Planned is going to last even longer. Jeez. I'm probably going to have to cut out sections of this. Like, just... Or should I... Should I preserve the integrity of the battle? Should I make you live through what I live through? I don't normally have to talk through these, so I'm bored. Like, I do these during class because it takes... N because it takes... No focus, because you're just sitting there waiting for Toxic to get these things down. Okay, and wait, does... Okay, good, good. There's a set that has a Roserade, which is bad, and I should have checked if that's what set Cynthia was using before I laid down Toxic Spikes, because that would have undone Diaz's whole turn with getting those Toxic Spikes down. But no, now I have Toxic Poison... On every Pokemon except Lucario and Staraptor, and I can just very easily stall. Okay, come on, come on, get down, get down. Okay. I'm gonna use a Toxic again, just in case she goes for a nut. Okay, she isn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got your annoying leftovers. You're. This is. Probably the most bulky of all of them. It's the only one that has leftovers. Lucario has a life orb, which will make things go even quicker. Okay, who's next up? Who's next? Probably the Lucario, I would guess. Yes, the Lucario. Uh, where's my flash? I'm. I'm gonna go with BLT. That Dark Pulse would have been bad for uh, Mate Eight. Okay. Oh, plus I need to burn it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh, well, that is way more than I expected it to deal. That's... That's fine, though. I have leftovers and can stall. Actually, hold on. I'll be clever. I'll oop, tank with Mayday 8, then I'll go for a Dark Pulse, which I can tank with Mary. See? Cynthia's dumb. Don't got AI to understand that I can switch, because why would I just do this? It's just lowering my Pokemon less and less, but I can stall. And pretty soon half of her team will be dead. Actually, no, because she's going to end up going for... She's going to use another one of the full restores, so... Uh, and the... So maybe I should... No, she isn't! Wait, was that kill? That doesn't kill, so I'm going to use a curse because... Huh. Okay, I just wasted one of my two curses. Oh, God. Is it still going to make me use curse? No, it do that's good. Jeez, that Lucario hits a lot harder than I expected. Okay, Spirit Tomb. Spirit Tomb, it's... Okay, that is Mary's deal because it is a special attacker. Got Dark Pulse, Shadow, Pulse, Shadow Ball, Psychic, Hypnosis. Only ones I have to worry about are Psychic and Dark Pulse, neither of which will do much damage. And all female. I just notice that all Cynthia's Pokemon are female, which is bad for attract strats. That's fine. It's fine. After this, I only got two Poke. Really, one, because one is a guaranteed win because of Paris Song. And gonna use Protect. Actually, that burn might get rid of Mary. No, I heal too much. Or, no, hold on. Is Leftovers an egg? Oh, god, Leftovers is just holding that off. But this thing is dealing damage. Yeah, I can win this with no healing items, I think. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I should be able to win with no healing items. If not, I'm pretty sure I have like 150 Revival Herbs left. Wait, is Leftovers only 116th? Oh, shit, there goes Mary. Uh, okay, so let's think about this. Who don't I need? I need... I... ooh. I don't know. I need Free Coke and at least one other Gaston. It's probably the best for Star Raptor, although Star Raptor is going to be a problem. It hits hard. Wait, I just need to use Protect for one turn. It doesn't matter, I realize. Unless... God forbid she uses another one of those full restores. Okay, good, good. We're good. Okay, Star Raptor. I... I got, do I have time to get Curse Ball? No, it's fa It's faster and it has Brave Bird. That wouldn't work. And she's saving her... I told him, what, what am I forgetting? She has one other Pokemon. She has... Oh, she has a Glaceon. Oh, that hit harder than I expected it to. So I am going to have to go for the Curse. Or use healing items. <laughs> Double edge doesn't affect me, moron! And there goes Mady 8. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna use iron defense to keep me from be wait oh it has a cho it has a choice item, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I I've been let's see choice scarf, yes. Yes, I don't know if that shouldn't have popped up for you, but it you might have seen part of a text document. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna get stealth rock off, which will help. And hmm, might have to use Jinx. Wait, Ampharos? 
I'm f- They're all champion Cynthia, so I don't know which one I'm looking at. Okay, Ampharos set. It is the Ampharos set. Uh, who has better special defense? You do, don't you? Why am I even checking? I know you do, because Jinx can't take a fucking hit. This is gonna come down to the wire if I can beat this without using healing items. Uh, light screen. Hmm. I'm gonna have to use healing items, but I got close, I think. <laughs> Fuck you, miss! I might not need healing items, I might not need healing items. Protect, protect, okay. I need to... I'm not gonna need healing items. Okay, that was a 50% chance, but... Okay, 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 okay. Wait. What if I don't go for Paris Song? What if I... Fuck. Nope, need, need healing items. I need healing items. I need so many healing items. Where are my revival herbs? There they are, 114 revival herbs. That. I say what? Now that I know that I'm looking at the right one was Ampharos. No. Oh wait, that's dark Dragon Pulse, not Dark Pulse. Half this video is just one battle. I want you to understand. Feel free to skip ahead. I want you to understand what this run has been like. But let's get off curse. Unless this kills, but it shouldn't. I've got good bulk, yeah. And now, should I... Will I be able to get that to... No. Because I need a Revival Herb anyway. And then just four turns to take out the Garchomp with Parasong. And it might one-shot... Free coke because it's fast and hits hard, but that doesn't matter. I could have killed it with if I went for the dusting bone. Wait, it's dead in two turns regardless. But no, no. Need to use two revives. That's all. I could probably one if I had four full restores, but. I didn't go for that strat, and even if Garchomp can one-shot Free Coke, it doesn't matter because Free Coke has a Focus Sash. Game, set, match, Cynthia. Keep battling. <laughs> that doesn't matter in the end, all these little things, because it's gonna perish. It's gonna die like a god. Focus Sash! Yes! Okay. My bad singing's gonna kill Garchomp. Okay, I might not even have needed to revive Dia. Well, I will because this is definitely gonna fit. Yeah, and you take me out with Outrage, but it doesn't matter. I still have Diaz, and you're going to perish. Game, set, match, Cynthia. I am now champion of Sinnoh. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, now I'm... Just a few minutes ago, I was a challenger. Now I'm most powerful. I was always most powerful. Yeah, 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 praise me, praise me, then take me to the Hall of Fame. And should I cut this? I should probably cut this. Wait, hold on, that was 40 minutes, and that was like 20 minutes ago, so... 88 hours almost exactly to do this run. It's... Not something I'd recommend, and as I say that, I'm already planning my next run of this type. I mean... 
Actually, yeah, as we watch this, I will improvise instead of having to record later what I'm going to do. I am planning another run, and I already have it worked out. I might not be able to succeed on it. I'm not going to do a video like this. I think I'm going to do a lot of, like, small videos throughout the summer as I beat parts of it. Because my next run that I'm planning is to add a second challenge on top of the no attacking challenge. I'm not going to do it in a Dreano attack, in a Dreano hack, even though I considered it. But yeah, I'm going to be doing another ch challenge. It's going to be in Pokemon Soul Silver. Tune in as I attempt to do a Soul Silver Nuzlocke without using any damaging moves. And that's coming up, but first, let's do the Hall of Fame. Let's save, let's see our partners that we've gone through. Diaz, Lady of Spikes, Free Coke, Perisher of Gods, BLT, who was the MVP of this run. It just really good. Um, who else is on my team? Gaston, the big old meat shield. Free Coke, the other meat shield, and then Mate 8, who I recruited because Spirit Tomb killed itself. But yeah, go me. Victory, I'm the champion. Champion McCulkey Culkin screen. This is the end of the video.